striving for greatness, trying to make it out. We're stuck in the matrix. Yeah, I'm striving for greatness, trying to make it out. We're stuck in the matrix. Yeah, I'm striving for greatness, trying to make it out. We're stuck in the matrix. Yeah, I'm striving for greatness, trying to make it out. We're stuck in the matrix. Uh, man, my auntie passed last night. This is a sad life. I'm trying to get my cash. Yo, what's good? It's your boy B-Dale. I am back with an esoteric synopsis. If you're new to this channel, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. But today we're going to be talking about an advanced network of tunnel systems, which are basically underground alien bases that are controlled by Luciferian technicians and draconians. But what you got to understand is, is that these underground facilities work in synergy with the 269 Walmarts that got closed down because they're basically gateways that lead to the Denver airport. So when you have a pole shift, there's mass calamity on the surface of the planet to where the governmental elite, the oligarchs and the postocracy got to hide in these tunnel systems in order to escape judgment. Now, these underground alien uh, bases are basically station points for many different malevolent extraterrestrial species that come to this planet for experimentation and for extermination when you're talking about eugenics and depopulation. Now, what you got also got to understand is, is that the Bible, when you understand the Bible intuitively, it is basically a theological metaphysical codex, right? Because when you go to the book of Daniel, and you take out all the vowels and you translate it in ancient Hebrew and you read it backwards, it tells you that there is an intergalactic gateway inside the planet that leads you to a subterranean kingdom when you're talking about hollow earth and uh, the city of Shambhala and the rainbow city and things of that nature, which coincides with this illustration when you're looking at the ancient comedic pyramids, right? Also, when you understand that these underground alien bases are basically labyrinths, of bases that basically uh, are conducive to many different ley lines on the planet, many that they're basically energy centers because they contain concentric interstellar vortex portals that basically take you to the moon because the Draconians uh, built the moon as a Draconian mothership on planet Jupiter. So these are basically uh, many different uh, uh, transitional processes on how they get to the moon and back to under the surface of the planet, right? So now what you're looking at is many different maps that basically coincide with the underground tunnels that we have in the United States and all around the planet. Now, that basically is conducive to the 269 Walmarts that closed down, right? So the same places where the Walmarts are closed down, those are also the underground tunnel systems that lead to uh, many different uh, station points to get to hollow earth and things of that nature. So you got many different extraterrestrial species. You got the Zeta reticular grays, you got draconians, and you also have uh, many genetically modified uh, species that live on the planet. When you're talking about Mothman, when you're talking about Bigfoot, all these things that they said were basically mythological, they live in these underground bunkers. And I'm gonna show you uh, all the uh, species and everything when I go through the video. Now, like I said, these tunnel systems are basically conducive to all the Walmarts that shut down, which is not a coincidence because like I said, when you have a pole shift, that's when you activate FEMA. And FEMA basically means that the planet is in a state of destabilization. And I also got a video that basically uh, coincides with everything what I just said because there's a guy who was a whistleblower. He was a, um, he, I think he was like a, a, a sergeant or something like that. And he talks about how uh, in the future, and he, he did this interview back in 2006. So he talks about in the future when FEMA is activated, that's when they're going to have all these uh, many different species come to the surface of the planet and feed on humanity, right? So these tunnel systems are basically conducive to the same places where they uh, shut down the Walmarts. So like I said, when you see high UFO activity, uh, possible uh, concentric interstellar vortex portals, 
and you also have suspect suspected inner earth entrances, right? So this is another map that basically coincides with the uh, the deep underground military bases, right? So now what you got to understand is what's inside these underground military bases. You have uh, on the first level, you have a security clearance and communications. You have a human staff housing. You have executives, labs, which are basically uh, Luciferian technicians. You have mind control experimentation. You have alien housing. You have genetic experiments. And you also have cryogenic uh, storage. So in my opinion, I think that's where they put a lot of the clones when you're talking about um doing like horizontal gene transfer when you transmute the consciousness of other people and you put it in a different avatar that's in a state of cryostasis that's inside uh an amalgamation of all these uh tunnel systems right they also have a, a train what you call the bullet it's basically a, a, a tram bullet and it's able to take you across the planet all around the world within five minutes because it travels at 12 to 14,000 miles per hour. And that's inside these uh, underground bunkers. And I got illustrations of what that's basically uh, uh, entailing. So with that being said, this is a, something I wrote out for you guys. You got, on, first of all, you got aliens, right? Which is your so-called biblical Nephilim because the, bibl the biblical Nephilim are the fallen uh, 200, the, uh, the 200 fallen angels that uh that went against uh the order of Anu. So that's one third of the galaxy that basically uh fell at a low vibration low vibrational state and fell at a third dimensional state, which is why they trapped in a three dimensional level. And you also have US U, uh, United States of American technology, you know, when you're talking about uh nuclear underground tunnel systems. And you also have human beings who are being genetically spliced. And they're basically amalgamating with many different uh, uh, other species and animals and things of that nature. And the government has also created an animal-human hybrid and alien-human hybrids. And the government made an agreement with aliens when you're talking about uh, President Eisenhower back in the 1930s. Because back in the 1930s, he basically said that because he because what you got to understand is, is that every president is related and every president is basically um, conducive and basically in alignment to uh, the Canaanite bloodline. So like I said, if you've been watching my videos, I told you the Canaanites got to make a sacrifice to the black nobility draconians who live in these underground military bases, right? So that's why it says that verbatim that humans are used for food. So they use humans, us, on the surface in exchange for high technology, right? And they use for cruel genetic experimentation and for impregnation for exchange for technology, like I said, and defense and control for the of the population. And you also have an alien presence in an advanced technology that's been here since the dawn of time, right? So, like I said, you have the infamous uh, Dulce Wars, which is basically in Los Alamos, Texas where you have uh, in a result of employees opposing the ab uh, abduction and experimenta experimentation of human beings after seeing them in cages. And I, there's a video that basically coincides with uh, everything that I'm saying because there's a movie called Cabin Fever. And in the movie Cabin Fever, you got many different extraterrestrial species that are basically caged up in these underground facilities that are controlled by Luciferian technicians. And, you know, right before right before the inception of a pole shift, they're gonna have these beings come up to the surface and it's basically gonna be a new form of a simulation that's gonna be taking place. So like I said, after seeing them in cages, waiting their fate as food for the reptilians, the source of liquid protein for the greys, because I told you the greys, they need our anatomy because the greys are basically, um, how can I say it? They're like the Frankenstein of all extraterrestrials, which is why you see many different uh, cow mutilations and all and things of that nature, because they're very um, uh, prevalent when it comes to uh, genetic manipulation and mind control technology. So now I'm going to show you this video for a second. So this video I'm going to be showing you is a guy who used to be uh, a colonel 
or I think he was a lieutenant or things of that nature, but he used to work in these underground bunker systems and he uh, came across, you know, uh, these uh, Nephilim, which are basically black nobility, draconian reptilians who stand about tw uh, 25 feet tall. So I'm going to just play the video. Colonel SC, you can call in if you have a question. Uh, we'll open up the lines. But um, what I wanted to talk to you about now to go into is, uh, you know, with everything happening in the world today, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you probably also agree that uh, when that you feel that 9-11 was an inside job and so forth. But what do you see the state of our country in the future? Where do you, where do you see us going? And what do you think's next on the list here? We have a, I'll tell you this, this is top secret, and I'm going to say it for the first time on the radio. I think I might have said it, Daniel, and got in trouble. But I'm going to say it again. There's a fault line that goes from the Bahamas up through the Carolinas. Every 500 yards, is a two kiloton nuclear weapon floating above it like a boy to blow it. To cause martial law in a one world order, you have to have all these catastrophes happen at one time so that there's order out of chaos. You hear what he said? You have to have mass calamity amalgamated at one point, all at once, in order to activate FEMA. Because when you activate FEMA, that's when you destabilize the planet. When you destabilize the planet, like I said, that's where, you know, the military, they come in, the government, they come in to help you. But it's usually something uh, that's basically used for something that's uh, going to go against humanity. They're basically going to uh, kill you off, basically, because I, like I said, that's basically coincides with the Hengelian dialectic principle. They create a problem, reaction and then a solution. And the solution is usually something that's diabolical to humanity. I'm going to keep playing a video. And when everybody's starving. Because in Katrina, court order, you have to have all these catastrophes happen at one time so that there's order out of chaos. And then when everybody's starving, because in Katrina, FEMA was there and all this, but all them people died, didn't that kind of give you an idea who was coming to save you? Nobody. Oh. They let them people out on their own. They bought 10,000 trailers from Horton Homes. And those 10,000 trailers were sitting in the same field in Colorado, an organized bunker group surrounded by razor wire with the razor wire pointed in, seen as firsthand, seen it with my own eyes. And they don't have it on, but they can turn a switch on and put 10,000 volts to that thing. So uh, when the martial laws come, they're going to have random, if there's some movies or some precursor movies, Deep Impact is one of them. Deep Impact goes into every single scenario that's already been said, and then he gets down to the point where the it, comets is going to hit, and he goes, we're going to have to do a lottery because we only have enough room underground for one, a half a billion people. Well, guess what the stones of the masonry says in Georgia from the Illuminati? Rule the world by a half a billion. Yep, exactly. Right. Well, I mean, that makes sense. I mean... I may not believe it, but yes. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen some of them that were 25 feet tall. So, wait, wait, these are these are aliens at Dulce Base? They're nothing. Yeah, at Dulce, they they do say they they hate us, believe it or not, and you can feel the hate between the Nephilim and the Greys and all that. They hate us, but they're in a, some kind of a constraint. And I was like, Jeff, you know, what I'm saying to uh, basically disseminate the confusion. A Nephilim is basically a black nobility draconian, right? And a black nobility draconian is basically an archon. And the archon is the one who controls everything in three-dimensional reality because they are the ones who gave uh, the power to the beast, who was the Canaanite, who is your uh, political leaders today. So I, I'm, I need you to understand that. That's basically uh, the, uh, the authority process when it comes to the draconians and the, and the aliens and, and the Canaanites. It's that God hasn't constrained it to the point of time. And just recently, of course, I'm sure some of the listeners have heard about the um, earthquake supposedly in Virginia and Colorado. Those were, in fact, an 11 kiloton nuclear weapon detonated underneath the ground in Virginia and one of the underground levels. And two five kiloton uh, nuclear detonations under the Denver airport. And what they're doing is if they 
the Nephilim are starting to, I guess God is lifting the constraints off of them, but they blew the entrances with uh, nuclear weapons so that they could trap them in there when there is no trap of them in there. I mean, I've seen them pick up half-ton boulders and throw them like baseballs. There's just no keeping them in there. And they're, they're not totally human. They're, they're spiritual in, in nature, and so you can't kill a spirit, you know? Well, if you're Sherry Schreiner, you can kill them with me. Well, I, I had a quick question. Going back to you were talking about the uh, the uh, beings at the Dulce base. You said that there were 25-foot-tall aliens, and then there were the greys. You said that you identified the 25-foot ones. You said that they were Nephilim, that, but they were fallen angels. What, what makes you say that? Why would they not necessarily just they, be they told extraterrestrials? Us, they told us that's what they were. They told us that they were... Um, the enemy of God, and they had totally, they had this big pitch still, which I didn't hear at all, but they pretty much convinced all the other scientists that they were going to be in this ultra-galactic war against God and that we were going to win. You know, because I always wondered how, how he's going to pull that off. And so I, that's basically, you know, the personification of the jealous God in Lil going against Anu, right? Because everything that he's saying coincides with the movie called Cabin Fever. Because you, what you got to understand is, is that when they weren't able to get the sacrifice, that's when the Archons basically destroyed everything on the planet. I'm going to keep going. I believe in a pre-trib rapture. I believe in post-trib. Otherwise, God wouldn't have wrote le revelations for the simple reason. When they come and the Christians disappear from extermination. The reptilians were part of the devil? Yes, the reptilians is the highest rank that you can be in the uh, alien agenda. Well, now, I, I have seen spiritually like demonic type reptilian entities, um, and they actually look like that one movie, Durango. Remember, what's that movie? Pepsi Demon? You know, what's the movie, that Durango movie? Durango, yeah. Durango. Durango. Now, did they look like that? Greg, do you know what I'm talking about? What yeah, movie? They, look, they look like the ones on V. Okay, okay. That's yeah. what they look like. Uh -oh. And they are the most evil of them all. Wow. And what do They're they talk? Very evil. How do they talk? Do they like gargle or? No, they talk just like us. But I, I guarded the doors inside one time at one ritual. And I've, I've been to several rituals. I've been to Bohemian Grove three times and watched that ritual. But How did you get ritual, in? How did you get in? Because I was security commander of the ah, door and the president hand chose his security team. Gotcha. And we were allowed, let's put it this way, at S4, I had so much security clearance that I could override the president's decision on what I seen fit at that time. Hmm. I could kill the vice president, but not the president, if I seen that he was stepping over the line. That's how much pressure was exerted on us. Now, I know this is going to be a question that's going to come up, and I know a lot of people are wondering this. How are you able to um, get away with talking about this kind of stuff without uh, having any type of uh, repercussions? Well, uh, very good, very good because, question. I was going to ask that too. Yeah, because things are coming so close, so so near. What am I going to do? Right. Am I going to put a dent in what they're going to do? No, because probably eighty percent of the people listening to me now don't even believe it. So wow. you know, and and they know this. And at first, I did get some repercussion. I had a Blackhawk uh, three years ago fly over and shot four fifty caliber rounds at me and gave me the finger. And I was told by the CIA they were going to do that. They were supposed to try to hit me. And and that was a sign that they did their job and missed. Hmm. Like a bell for almost three months. Unbelievable. Now, is there? do you think there's like a galactic alien... You know, I heard uh, Sherry talking about there's the galactic aliens everywhere. And they're all the demons, but they're different fractions, and they fight each other. So is that kind of like what the greys are and the reptilians and, you know, uh, the, the greys, the reptilians, and everything is a rank. I listened to a Satanist the other day on YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody somebody from the extreme side of the show said it. Anyway, I watched it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guy said it, 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 he, in his ancient writings, it was Hasantan. And it's not a name, it's a position. Right. So yeah, the, the adversary. The the lowest form, and then you got the talls that run the grave, and then you got the humanoid hybrids that 
are pretty much high level, and then you got the reptilians who is controlled all to be a reptilian, and any of them can shape shift into any form they want. Mm. They're forbidden to shape shift into reptilian unless they burn down. But let's just make this very clear for our listeners that invest a lot of money in this Oregon. Again, Oregon will <laughs> yeah, not right. protect them against this, correct? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, like I said, this uh, this came out, that interview came out in 19, no, uh, 2006. He was a colonel, a lieutenant. He got seven black hearts. You know what I'm saying? And when you understand <clears throat> the European, when it comes to mili uh, to the military, they have a deep veneration for it. So when it comes to that, that lets me know that he's telling the truth because he's not going to put his uh, legacy on the line like that when it comes to uh, his uh, military background. Right? So now When you go to this publication called Shambhala and Argartha, so you have a map of the underground tunnel systems, right? And like I said, there are many different levels. On level one, you got the uh, the garage for street maintenance. And then you also, on uh, level two, you have the garage trains, uh, shuttles, and machines, and disc maintenance. And then on level uh, four, you have human ore research. When you're talking about bioplasmic uh genetic mutation um what else you got and on level five you also have extraterrestrials where they are basically housed at <clears throat> and then like i said and on level six you got a a, a privately called uh base called the nightmare hall where the genetic labs are basically at <laughs> So now when you look at this illustration right here, these caged up extraterrestrial species, right? In these biological laboratories. Now, if you ever seen the movie Cabin Fever, because they're, they're basically a, a direct emulation, I'm gonna show you. When you go to the movie Cabin Fever, right? And when you go inside these underground bunkers that are controlled by Luciferian technicians and Draconians, you had all these extraterrestrial species that was basically encapsulated inside these cages, right? <clears throat> and they was coming to the surface to feed on humanity. Just like uh, President Eisenhower said, because we're basically a sacrifice to the Archons, who are the uh, Black Nobility Draconian Archons, right? So like I said, when you look at this illustration, it looks just like that. So, and what you got to understand is that Dr. York put out this publication back in the 1990s. So he's seen something. So that movie that I'm telling you about, um, Cabin Fever, I think that movie came out in 2011, right? And they're basically a direct emulation of everything that's going on in these underground bunkers, right? Because like I said, the CIA, the CIA has an office in Hollywood and Hollywood has an office in the CIA. Right. So now I'm going to show you another video. What's now you got to understand what's inside these alien bases. So it's the, the way I set this video up. I want to make it seem like, you know, we're at we're underground at these uh, tunnel systems. I want to make it seem like that we're going through a journey and everything and things of that nature. So if you got a snack or whatever, get your popcorn and, and everything. So we finna get straight to it. Now there are 131 active underground military bases in the United States. There's 1,477 of them worldwide. Each one has an average cost of 17 to 19 billion dollars. Each one is uh, built in the site. Uh, oh, it used to be, it'd take a year to two years to build each one. And now they're capable of building a couple of them a year uh, with sophisticated methods. My colleague, uh, Al Felix, has actually been on some of the high speed railways, uh, the Magneto Leviton trains that connect all the deep underground military bases within the United States. He's been on a Mach 2 train and floats off of. Built off a single rail at a, a three quarters of an inch off the rail and has uh, 
what we call high tech. We have nothing like this on the surface. Real Lake is where the infamous Area 51, S4, S2, a CIA base, uh, uh, it was originally a bombing range, a nuclear test site. Uh, it was later become the most secret base in the United States. Um, it employs over 18,000 workers who work in shifts of 12 hours of, at a whack. Most of them work in the cover of darkness, like us. We built out nine underground military bases there, each with an average uh, uh, capacity capable of basically a city under now let me interject i need you to understand the guy that's putting out this information he was killed for putting this information out and i also got a video for that his name is phil schneider more than quarter cubic miles all about underground they have boring machines for instance they don't bore they literally vitrify and melt the rock and flagrate the rock it's a very sophisticated laser uh, uh melting and deflagrating system Produces the rock to the powder and then melts the, the remaining rock as a coating on the inside of the base, so you don't have to use gunite, cements, and other kinds of things like that. That's all the all old hat now uh, technology. This is just basically the new technology we get is the old hat of the military. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it's about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build an underground base, you drill four basic holes, and you build you call scopes or cross member holes across the black use blasting equipment and special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation. And you literally blast out or tunnel out uh, or you flagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. I was involved in building another base onto in inside of Pelsey, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos laboratory. It's a biological laboratory. One of the southwest part of the Archelaida Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles, all about underground. Then to the southwest of that, we built, we were, we were in the process of the early stages of building the drill four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. Uh, number the Early at that time, a number of the original uh, uh, well or uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were were uh, uh, the rate of up two miles a day. And Area Fifty One is only one base, it's one of the hundred and thirty one bases. Of these hundred and thirty one bases, I call Area Fifty One a mixed base. It's got more than one base. Twenty five test range. Area Fifty One. S2, S4, Room Lake, and a host of others. Now, these mega bases are gobbling up our gross national product. Right now, we're spending 28% of the gross national product on building underground bases solely. That doesn't account for the defense budget, that doesn't account for the spare parts budget, it doesn't account for any of that at all. And the black budget is dead, dead wrong. It sidestepped the United States Congress and its constitution of its people and said, you're a bunch of morons, you don't need to know. Well, a need to know basis is an executive order written during the Eisenhower era, right after the created 1954 treaty, and is... Just like I said, Pre President Eisenhower, he made a pact with the Draconians. So, you know, uh, to... To let the draconians feed on humanity. So this is not by coincidence that eight hundred thousand people come up missing on the planet, right? Every year, on time, every time. So now remember when you go inside these WalMarts, when you go inside these WalMarts, when you first go into those entries, what's the first thing you see is all those missing kids or those or those missing people or those missing women all around the planet, all around the United States. So that, like I said, these WalMarts that are closing down, they're basically station points of where these underground bunkers are at. Because I told you, they're basically a direct emulation of the map system, of the tunnel system, when you're talking about these military bases that lead to uh, many different extraterrestrial species who want to feed on humanity. I'm gonna keep playing a video. Business and illegal in this country and should be overturned and abolished. 
Our alien thing is fine, except for one thing. Alien takeover is a serious threat. Kept totally out of the public view, off the surface, I'm sure the underground bases, without question, are being used as a form, a place to house alien takeover. Alien takeover means the implementation of a one world government. Facts. So everything that you're seeing, this is what's inside those underground bunkers, right? So like I said, for uh, all the new people that's coming in, that's trying to catch up on the video, <clears throat> I got to find it. Hold on for a second. Yeah, for all the new people that's coming in, <clears throat> I was telling people, when you look at this illustration of all the Walmarts that closed down, it looks just like it looks just like the uh, tunnel systems, right? Because like I said, these vortexes in these portals and these station points where these uh, these underground bunkers are at, you know, they're basically energy centers, right? So the same places where you get all these Walmarts closing down, th those are basically the inception points of where these alien bases are, these military bases. Because like I said, most of these, uh, when you look at uh, these dots right here, these are possible concentric interstellar vortex portals because the portals is like a uh, a transmutation process that, that basically takes you to the moon and back uh, in these underground alien bases. Because I told you the moon is a draconian mothership that controls uh, patriarchy. And patriarchy is galvanized by uh, the deep state Democrats who do the bidding of draconians and uh, other extraterrestrial species who want to feed on humanity. So like I said, it's not by coincidence when you go inside these Walmarts, they got all the missing children and the things of that nation when you first go inside Walmart in the entrance. They got all of them hanging up, right? Because they go into these underground tunnel systems. And they also go into these underground bunker systems. Well, uh, when you're talking about the Bermuda, uh, Bermuda Triangle, I already broke that down when you go uh, look at some of my past videos, right? So now, uh, where are we at? What you also, what you also got to understand is that a lot of these movies... I can find it. A lot of these movies, Ben told you everything that's going on. Remember this movie right here? And who does that look like? He looks like Donald Trump. And it's not a coincidence. This is the old Super Mario Brothers, and he's underground. This is basically, the plot of the movie was basically predicated on he was underground in these underground cities. And they were being controlled by draconian reptilians that you're seeing right now. Right? He looks just like Donald Trump. Right? And you got 14 foot tall draconians in the movie. So now when you look at it from that perspective, when you look at this, Dr. York put this book out and it was basically specifying everything that's talking about the end times. So when you look at the illustration, who does that look like in the middle? That looks just like who? Donald Trump. Because he's the last president, which is 45. 45, 4 plus 5 equals 9. 9 means completion. So this is the end of uh, this is the end of the uh the lunar cycle, because we in the sun cycle. So they gotta give you everything as far as the truth in the age of information, which is the age of Aquarius, right? Which is why when you look at this video, they giving you the reality. Like I said, 
the mothership is here. But you got to watch this video. Because like I said, it's not by coincidence that everything is taking place right now in the form of full disclosure. I'm going to play the video. Mothership just landed. Right. What is that? A fucking UFO. Oh, shit. You yeah. see it? Oh, fuck. Oh, it's just CGI. Here's another angle. Look at that helicopter feeling. See that? You see the look, there's a structure right there. You know what I'm saying? So this is not, you know, a coincidence. This is not Proj uh, Project Blue Beam. This is not CGI. This ain't none of that. This is unbelievable. Honestly, I've I've gone through this like frame by frame. If you don't believe me and you think it's CGI, whatever, this is literally I'm watching it frame by frame here. Look at that. That is that is a mothership. So with that being said, you know, everything that's taking place right now is not a coincidence. It's all prophetic, right? But like I said, it's up to you to have the mental fortitude to decipher is it Project Blue Beam or is it, you know, a, actually a mothership, right? So I got another video to show. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm just going through all the uh, receipts that's basically conducive to everything that I'm talking about right now. Because, like I said, we're at the inception point of full disclosure. Now, this is another guy. You know, he's getting interviewed and he also was a, a military whistleblower. And he's going to specify everything that he experienced while he was in the mil in the military. So within that base, that's where this um, this vast subterranean network of these maglev trains and and these other networks put underneath our feet. Th that's where it originates from, correct? No, that's just one subway from Las Vegas to uh, the new base. It used to be called Sandia. I don't know what it's called these days. That's that's a separate operation. The ones that you're talking about, you know, that are Los Angeles and go to uh, Dallas, Phoenix, uh, and back east. All that's a separate operation. Those are separate tunnels uh, that they use. And in addition to that, the third set of tunnels that was made by E.T. Um, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years ago, and that's the one the Navy uses to take their people uh, all over the world. That's a separate tunnel system. And when, the, uh, when they're building the current tunnel systems, Every once in a while, they'll run into that a tunnel, and they're just told to uh, go over it or under it, not to disturb it. And so they just leave those uh, intact. Are there ATs currently down there also, maybe working alongside certain groups to uh, uh, for maybe some from the nefarious agenda? Absolutely. I don't know whether it's nefarious or not, but... Uh, Inside the planet Earth, there's 800 civilizations that live there and work there. And, and, uh, and people find that hard to believe. They say, oh, there can't be that much room. Yes, there is that much room. Uh, and there's uh, all kinds of people that live inside the Earth, uh, including the, uh, the reptilians that essentially control us. And now, uh, in my disclosure, I told how mankind was started. Uh, the serpents, who are trillions of years older than we are, and are the head group. And they do all the manufacturing of every single thing that uh, lives on Earth. Uh, they do animals, insects, um, fish, uh, monsters, uh, humans, everything. They do that, and they're kind of aligned with the reptilians who work with the serpents. And the reptilians' job is to keep everything going, to keep everything organized. Uh, and they live underground, too. You'll, you'll never see them because they don't want their existence uh, revealed. Now, uh, they make deals with the various planets. And like I say, there's a billion Earths all doing the same thing, taking people, taking humans, who need a little bit to refresh their course 
on living with integrity without any hate or greed. And, and uh, they organize that stuff and be sure that that's, that's exactly what we're supposed to do. So, you know, it comes down to the fact that, you know, you have to be very pragmatic when it comes to this information, right? Because you got people who really believe in Jesus, but they don't believe in extraterrestrials, right? But like I said, when you understand, when you stop reading the Bible like a children's book and you read it as a metaphysical codex and you break down the esoteric knowledge of it, you will see that it's basically talking about many different extraterrestrial species that's coming to this planet for experimentation and for extermination. So that's why I said it's very imperative to understand you got to get off these airplanes. Stop trying to fly everywhere. Stop, you know what I'm saying? I understand that you want to live your best life because when you have this so-called alien invasion, they don't, they, they're they they basically going to start shooting down these commercial airplanes, right? And when they said that, that's going to be your so-called invasion on humanity. Because first, when these uh, these UFOs in the, that's in the atmosphere, they're going to uh, they're going to basically attack commercial airlines and they're going to uh, attack uh, military helicopters. But I'm going to show you this video uh, basically talking about Phil Schneider and his experience and, you know, how he got his hand and everything blowed off uh, inside these uh, alien bunkers. To the bowels of the earth, down 100 feet, then 200, then further. As it did, it carried Phil Schneider from the bright desert sunshine into the dark unknown. The year was 1979, and Schneider, a geologist and explosives expert, had been brought in as part of a team working for the United States government on the expansion of an underground military base near the small town of Dulce, New Mexico. Schneider's job was to descend into an exploratory shaft and evaluate the layers of rock below the surface in order to determine what types of explosives would be needed for further development. He was experienced with this type of thing, but on this day, Schneider felt uneasy. When his team had drilled the shaft, a strange black sooty air had come spewing out, which Schneider had never seen before. Now, he was dressed in a protective suit, headed to the bottom of the shaft with a number of armed green berets beside him. What were they expecting, he wondered. Schneider himself was armed with a pistol he hoped he would have no reason to use. At the bottom of the lift, Schneider set off exploring through the seemingly natural caverns hidden at those depths. Suddenly, he turned a corner and came face to face with something unfathomable. There, only a few feet in front of him, were three extraordinary beings. They were humanoid, but gray and clammy, with oversized heads and large black eyes trained straight on Schneider. Two were short, perhaps four feet tall, while the third stood over seven feet. As the creatures began moving towards him, Schneider panicked and drew his pistol, firing quickly at the two smaller creatures and killing them. Just then, the large creature motioned its hand in a circle and outshot a blue beam of light. The beam hit Schneider, knocking him flat on his back. Well, Paul, you can see his hand. His hand got blown off. He only got three fingers. Cutting open his stomach open his stomach and blowing off three of his fingers in the process. The creature moved towards Schneider as if to finish him off when all of a sudden a team of green berets stirred by the sound of gunshots came barreling around the corner weapons drawn. They were greeted by a group of similar gray creatures running in from the other direction. Without warning death was all around Schneider. A vicious battle erupted as he lay in the dirt, unable to move. Just when he thought his own death was upon him, he felt the strong hands of a green beret dragging him out of the fight and throwing him onto the lift back to the surface, saving his life as the slaughter continued. The last thing Schneider saw as the lift began to rise was the green beret who had saved him, hit by a blue beam of light. This was the story Phil Schneider told in 1995 to an enthralled audience at the annual Preparedness Expo in Orange County, California. When hearing it for the first time, the story might seem unbelievable, until that moment when Schneider slowly raises his left hand to reveal three missing fingers. 
giving his words a visceral quality, battle scars. In another interview, he even showed his stomach and chest scars. And he doesn't have any medical history of operations of this sort. Could his story really be true? Could Schneider really have, in his words, surprised a whole underground base of existing aliens and lived to tell the tale? Or maybe Schneider's story barely begins to scratch the surface. So like I How said, would you feel if someone was... Co- so it's, it's up to you, like I said, to have the mental and spiritual fortitude to activate that spiritual eye to you know, have a delineation between is it a conspiracy or if it's, is this is everything that she's saying is real, right? So now, for the, everybody who's coming in late, like I said, when you go to the Walmarts, because like I said, it's not a coincidence, you know, right during the inception period, when you're going into the age of Aquarius and when you have Pluto in Aquarius, you got all these Walmart shutting down. They're shutting down because they're basically station points of tunnel systems for un- underground alien bunker systems. That's conducive to this illustration right here. So it's not by coincidence. Right. Because that's let me know that something's going to uh, take place. Because in order to have, in order to have FEMA activated, right? In order to have FEMA activated uh, on a holistic level, you have to have a, uh, an amalgamation of many different afflictions on the planet. You got to have a so-called alien invasion. You got to have uh, a food shortage. You got to have the water system compromised. You got to have, you know, all these problems on the planet to where you activate FEMA. You got to have all these weather anomalies that's taking place in a form of calamity. Because when you have all these afflictions going on at once, that's when you destabilize humanity to where you uh, you can galvanize their energy and their resources in order to control them. So with all that being said, thanks for watching this video. Get this video out there because everything that's taking place right now on the planet basically coincides with these underground alien bases, which also is conducive to the Walmarts that closed down. So it's not a coincidence that all this stuff is happening at one time. It's not a coincidence that when you go inside Walmart and you got all those missing children on uh, on the walls over there, all those missing women on the walls over there. It's not a coincidence because like I said, these Walmarts were basically uh, FEMA camp centers when uh, martial law is activated, right? And it's also a, a way to funnel in humanity to feed us to these Draco- uh, draconians. And also, like I said, it's going to come a point in time, just like in the movie Cabin Fever, you're going to have all these uh, different malnevolent extraterrestrial species that are going to come to the surface and feed right before you have the inception of a pole shift that's going to be taking place. So with all that being said, thanks for watching this video. End of transmission.